I'm Molly Pajalskis, the Vice President of Marketing at LK, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the KBiz Next Stage. As America's number one selling kitchen sink company and the leading manufacturer of award-winning drinking water products, we are excited to sponsor the Happiness Equation Panel, where you'll hear industry professionals discuss techniques to promote wellness in your designs. Throughout our 100 years in business, LK products have constantly evolved to encourage health within our communities. And this past year has been a stark reminder of the essential need for wellness, starting in our own homes and continuing into all the spaces where families spend time, such as schools and offices. With healthier hydration, lead reducing filters, hands-free features and antimicrobial materials, we evaluate each product and determine how we can improve upon them when it comes to wellness as a whole. And you can see our products right here at KBiz. While things look and feel different this year, we're excited to be bringing the LK neighborhood back, just in a virtual format. Please visit our neighborhood of solutions on the KBiz platform and walk through our virtual house to interact with our newest innovations. So without further ado, let's bring out today's panel. I hope you share my excitement to hear from this creative panel their perspective on happiness as an essential part of wellness. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Karisha Swanson. Karisha is a respected journalist in the home design space and is currently the market director at House Beautiful Magazine. She has also been an invaluable advisor for me personally, broadening my knowledge of kitchen and bath design. Karisha, thank you for steering the wellness topic today. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to KBiz Virtual, and thank you for that great introduction and message from our sponsor, LK. Today's discussion is on the happiness equation. How well are your designs? Our discussion will focus on building positivity into our design spaces from the ground up. Wellness in design is hard to measure, but we all know living in a happier environment leads to a healthier lifestyle. For the last three years, we at House Beautiful have worked with builders and designers in key markets to create a home that reflects many of these ideals, ideals that we'll discuss today and have had the pleasure of having LK be a partner in these builds. We're excited to be taking this idea of the Happier Healthier Home to Texas this year in our fourth annual Whole Home Project, and we invite everyone here to be part of that journey. Our panelists today are well-versed in creating spaces and products that serve the needs of today's consumers. For them, wellness is a part of the DNA of their brands. First up, interior designer, owner, and principal, Jennifer Bertrand of Jennifer Bertrand LLC. Raise your hands. <laughs> Next, interior designer, CEO, and principal of TRIO, Angela Harris. And finally, Jimmy Slattery, senior product manager at LK. One quick housekeeping note before we get started. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a chat function and a Q&A function. Please make sure to put any of your questions into the Q&A and we will be, do our best to answer those questions at the end of the session. So I purposely kept your intros to your names and titles because this is such an amazing panel and you all come to this conversation with truly different perspectives. I'd love if you could tell us a little about your background and tell us in the context of home design, how do you define happiness in the home? And feel free to share how your own experiences have contributed to your definition of this topic. Jennifer, I'd love to start with you. Hey, hi, you guys. I'm Jennifer Bertrand. I won a reality show on HGTV called Design Star. Then I won the Angie, Angie's List um, Sleep Sanctuary Contest. And now I'm the designer on Lifetime Channel's Military Makeover. But how I define happiness is because Honestly, some of you know this, um, our son was born with two rare malformations. And I tell you this, it's still a happy story, but 20 surgeries, um, he had trach feeding tube, we lost our house, our cars, everything, and I hustled back. So you really learn how your environment affects your soul when you're hustling on your way back from the bottom. And I'm here living proof of happiness afterwards. I love that. Jennifer, I think we're going to pop into a couple of um, images that actually show some of your ideas. Right. So here's the thing. You guys were feeling sorry for me for a second. Like, oh my gosh, Jen, you lost your house. 
Look at this. This is my personal kitchen. And I share this because it's the first time I've shared it with the world. And it's about, you know me, look at me. I'm a maximalist. I love color. I'm your friend who's like Elton John. But sometimes I try to teach people that obviously like there can be a cerebral happiness. And so we have color in our countertops. And the reason why I'm perfect for this LK panel is because you can, it's hard to see on the picture on the far left is a glass fridge and I don't like water in the fridge. So our LK water filler is on the backside and that's my personal mom happiness because we added the water filler on the back and a shelf to keep your glass that as you're using it. So you can kind of balance snob factor versus reality of needing to stay well and hydrated. And I share this picture because if you crop in, it looks like I'm killing it, life is great. But the reality of it is we're still drywalling, we're doing things in phases and the reality of like having less stress by doing things well and right in small moments. I, I love that. And Angela, I'm going to hop into you next. How do you define this? Oh, oh gosh, there's so many areas of wellness that we get so excited about. And I love Jennifer's energy. I think it starts there where we all have great energy. And I think, you know, she brought up something really important where we've all been affected by some area of wellness in our life. And we have seen firsthand how it can affect your lifestyle. And so much of that is driven by your environment. If you think about it, 90 percent of our time is still spent inside. So, I mean, especially through the pandemic. So your environment plays a big, big deal in um, your component of wellness. And from our perspective, so I'm the CEO and, and um, principal of TRIO. We have 70 designers on staff and we work with builders and developers. So I'm really in the areas of new construction and, and bringing out new product to the marketplace. And so we have really adopted a culture of making not only great design accessible, to every income level, every cultural background, but also um, everybody deserves a healthy place to live. And so how as design principles um, can we and disciplines, can we factor into being part of the solution there? So I love this picture specifically because this is one of our high density projects. And you can see right off the bat, we have meditation um, pods on the left. We have these beautiful recycled um, seatbelt rocking chairs from Philips Collection. And we have a juicing bar and live green wall. That's an actual live green wall with irrigation in the back there. And then of course there's access and accessibility to the indoor natural light flooding in through this space and the pool area to promote fitness. So love this project and for that very reason that just walking into this space makes me happy. <laughs> and one of the things that I love that you said too, Angela, is like not everybody can flee the city right now, right? No. Urban environments need to have the same access to wellness as suburban environments, as rural environments. And so it becomes really important. Yes, absolutely. And it's infectious. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Jimmy, how do you play into this? Yeah, so working in product development, it's it's my job to understand consumer pain points and create products that solve for them. Uh, working in the kitchen space is a lot of fun. It's very relatable to just about anyone out in the world. You can talk about your job to just about everybody. Uh, and when we do provide those better products, we make everybody's everyday life just a little bit better. So to me, the, it, quickly, that's how I define my contribution to the wellness and happiness in the home. Uh, as we talk to consumers, we really stumble upon two main themes, two common pain points. First of all, I don't have enough space in my kitchen. I need better storage and organization solutions. We see this a lot in densely populated urban centers, uh, especially, and, and we have products like workstation sinks where a custom fit accessory slides along the sink ledge, uh, freeing up a lot of valuable room on that counter space. The other theme is concern about clean, safe uh, drinking water for people's families. And that's where LK, as a water solutions company, having that expertise in delivering fast, clean, uh, convenient drinking water, uh, we can really help. So this concept here that, that we're showing uh, on screen, we're very excited about it. It's the LK Water Center. Uh, you can see it in our, in our virtual neighborhood. And it really ties together these two common themes. So think about all that wasted space under your sink. We now have a, a slide in unit that takes advantage of every square inch, uh, top to bottom, front to back, uh, drawers that pull out that are built around the structured plumbing under your sink, uh, filtration integrated so that that apron front flips down within there is a is a filtration unit that sends uh, cold 
filter drinking water to a two-in-one dispense faucet. So imagine getting that same kind of LK bottle filler experience all right there at your, at your kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to see this product yesterday and was super impressed. Um, also, all you lovely people out there know that it can also come or will eventually come panel ready, which made me very excited for the designers as part of this group. So it's gonna have lots of amazing options. What I'm getting from all of your responses is that you all strive to create solutions for like the life you're living now, taking wellness to that next level to create happy homes. We'd love to get into some real world solutions here. And I know we have some more images, but let's start with Angela. Um, Angela, some of the products that Jimmy mentioned are designed for better use of space in urban environments. As an expert in multi-residential housing, how do you incorporate wellness into high density situations? So for us, when we look at our high density um, work, uh, much of it is about building community, right? And socialization. So if we can't um, get the higher end products in the units, we still make the units accessible to wellness components because it's a behavioral change, right? But we strive in the community areas and the amenity areas to really integrate in the higher end products as well. So the three key areas that we really look at is of course programming to make sure that we hit on all the pieces and parts like this fitness room um, actually multifunctions as a yoga room as well. But then in materiality and working with manufacturers like Jimmy and making sure that we are doing everything we can to reduce the toxins in the communities that we're building. I think that's a key, key component. And then of course that activation of space and that's where we build communities. So this is a community garden. We work with a lot of third party vendors that come into our properties as we design the spaces. Uh, everything from Starbucks to Lululemon to other nutritionists that come in to help help educate our residents on, um, on wellness and sustainability, just because it's, it's such a key point that if we provide the amenities, we also need to educate the residents with the spaces and how they've been designed so they know how to utilize them and, and understand that really socialization has proven <laughs> to reduce mental stress and really work towards that mind-body balance. Um, one of the things I love that you said that there was about education. Um, I think so often, even when we're thinking about simple things like appliances, we yeah. sometimes forget that if you don't educate the people about how to use them effectively, they're never going to get the full benefit of that. And so I love that in these urban environments that you're creating, you're making sure that the people that are really going to be using them understand how to use them and what the benefits are. That's fantastic. Yes. Um, Jennifer, uh, we know one of your focuses is designing for living in place, uh, a buzzy topic we are all interested in that is not really just for people over 60, which some people might think. <laughs> Can you share some situations and solutions that have been successful in your own designs? And perhaps even adding to that, share uh, your concept about what a forever home should really be. Yeah, no, thank you. Honestly, when you think about it, when you start to design a house and you think it's for when you've kind of aged, you won't, it's too late. You won't be ready. So you really have to be thoughtful when you're designing that you do it ahead of time or else it's not, it's going to cost too much for you to do it at that time. For this client, um, we did a beautiful stone bench. So like it used to be the concept that if you design for living in place, it was very depressing. Let's face it. It was, you know, hideous, thick grab bars and all of those moments. Brands are now realizing that everyone's going to have life happens. So if you're designing for living in place, it's designing for whatever life is going to throw at you, in-laws moving in, a child gets injured, something like that. This client, I mean, if you look at that, that's just a beautiful stone bench with beautiful mitering. We also added channel glass into that door to let sunshine in because the psycho psychological impact of your environment is just has to be so thoughtful. And so often, like when talking to designers or brands, it's about really taking the time to allow when you bid a project to have the thoughtful questions and the time. So, cause I'm sure every time Angela touches a project, it's, you know, there's a lot of pre-thinking ahead of time. And for me, I tell my clients, I'm going to ask you a lot of creepy questions and we're going to get to know each other really well. But if I do my job right, I'm going to plan for everything you don't even know life's going to throw at you. I, I want to hear one of these creepy questions that you ask. 
<laughs> you know what's one of the funniest is like when you start to ask people what they keep on their nightstand and stuff like that like what do you use in your drawers what do you do that like a lot of it is about routines and when you're doing multi-generational living or things like that and um things like there's um LaDonna um who's certified living in place she did a whole house that has every single element well thought out and I think the thing is as a brand or contractor if you know it's going to um be new to contractors plan for that time because when you start to like put it into your work it's going to have a little resistance but you build your team up you have occupational therapists who help you and you have your team of people who are technology experts and all of that and then you're only going to shine and look good Right. And it's, it, it is kind of funny. You sort of need like a crystal ball into the future uh, to be able to think about it thoughtfully. But so many people walk into homes when they're buying a home, as I just said, and they're thinking, oh, is this going to, this is my forever home, but not, but really just because they fall in love with the aesthetics, not because they necessarily fall in love with the practicality. And so that's really what you're getting at here is really thinking beyond just the moment in time. The other thing too, is that, you know, so many of these living in place solutions really span across every age category. I want to bench in my shower always, right? It just makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to do things in there. Um, so these are really about smart solutions for living right now. Uh, Jimmy, LK has been first to market with several thoughtful living in place solutions. Can you expand on a few more of those and what you saw lacking in the marketplace that maybe led to some of their developments? Sure. Yeah, Carisha, taking a step back and just talking about innovations within the sink at, at LK. Uh, one of the first things we saw was a, a trend and a drive towards large single bowl sinks. People really want to take advantage of maximum advantage of that flat working space in the bottom of the sink, let large uh, pots and pans soak. But you give up that flexibility you used to have with a tr kind of traditional double bowl sink. Uh, and so we came up with this idea of this aqua divide ledge. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You can lay uh, pans with handles across that ledge. They can still sit flat, they can still soak, but you still have the advantage of separating out that stuff versus what you're working with in that working bowl on the right with a garbage disposal. Uh, that's been really popular. That one goes back several years, really, and that's now pretty ubiquitous across our residential sink uh, portfolio. Right. Um, the, the next one is uh, workstation sinks that I mentioned earlier, these have a custom, uh, they have a ledge built in on the front and the back, and then those custom fit accessories that help with meal prep and cleanup. So like a roll up drying rack and a cutting board. We also have other accessories, a colander, a, a different kind of drying rack, uh, really trying to help free up that counter space and help people maximize the use of that, of that so valuable counter space within their kitchen. And there's a lot of workstation sinks out in the market. LK wasn't the first one to get out there, but we really do love the solutions that we have out there now. We have a ton of different accessories. We're making sure that our stainless steel sinks have rounded corners that can stay clean and beautiful over the years. So uh, that's another innovation. Uh, next one up here is this uh, in-wall live dispenser that Jen has in her home. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. um, it's like having an LK bottle filler that we all know from schools and, and, and using it at the airport right there in your home. So uh, going back to that theme of people being concerned about safe, clean drinking water, you know, what, what more convenient solution could you have than a, a bottle filler right there? And thinking about the world we live in now, uh, people are much more conscious about hydration. People are drinking a lot more water, staying hydrated. Uh, and they're also trying to do that sustainably. You know, we don't want to be using plastic bottles if we can avoid it. So everyone, you know, the kids going to school, but also parents going to work. Uh, we've all got these refillable water bottles. So having a solution like this in your home really helps uh, with, the, with the convenience factor. And then finally, really directly speaking, Think that we launched last year at KBiz, very proud of it. Uh, is first to market apron front dual depth ADA compliant sink. So over the years, architects, designers are coming to us saying, you know, all ADA sinks are simple shallow basins because we have to satisfy the knee clearance requirement up front for someone wheeling up the sink. But there's a lot more room in the back. How do we take advantage of that? How can we make an ADA compliant sink more dynamic? And, and this is our answer, and we love it. Um, we have workstation accessories as well. Yeah, that, that bottom grid that you see in this image that actually flips over and creates and extends a shallow working surface in case someone is doing something where a shallow surface would be more uh, ergonomical. So the, uh, the Dark Canyon line, I think, is a great one. And living in a place, like Jen said, it doesn't just have to be uh, someone in a wheelchair. You know, it might just be a lot more ergonomical for you to, to do some of the, your tasks with the sink seated, and this sink helps you a lot with that. 
No, I think, you know, the innovations that you guys have created over the years really do help people in life, period, right? Regardless of age and regard, regardless of kind of their environment. And before we hop into the next question, Jennifer, I have to ask, how, how and where do you use it? You said it yours is your, your water bottle, bottle filter is on the side, right? But is it, oh, are you still, okay, go ahead. Well, it's on the back side of our, like when you see the whole like pretty side of the kitchen with the fridge and the, the range, it's on the back side hidden and it's also by the back door. So if our son is out playing, he can run in and grab it. But one of my favorite things is something simple where you just do a built-in um, drink glass ledge next to it because then you don't have to keep cups that are being used on the countertop and they're on a, a shelf right next to it. So it's a really easy grab and go. And no joke, Jimmy, I'm not sucking up to you, but it's my favorite thing in our house. I, I have to say, Jennifer, the editor-in-chief awesome. of, of House Beautiful, Joe Saltz, has one in her house, and she has three small children. Her and her husband have three. Wow. Well, not small. I guess they're from teenage to little. When you don't have kids, you think everybody's small. And, <laughs> and she said this has been one of the best things that she's put in her kitchen as well, because they can just grab it on the way in and out. They're not having to use plastic bottles all this all the time. you know. So it's just super simple and in a great area right off of their kitchen. Yeah, so same as yours. So, okay, here we go. Clearly and unfortunately, we're still in this pandemic. As we prayerfully come out of this, how has the past year changed your perspective on wellness? And Jimmy, since you were just talking about LK, let's start with you. Sure. I, I think uh, it's a heightened awareness of this entire world of unseen things that have a real impact on our lives. Uh, the virus, obviously, but you know, wearing a mask everywhere um, makes me think of cold and flu season in years past. And you think, oh, it's cold and flu season. It's just out in the world. I might catch a cold. I might catch a flu. We now know that what that is, is us breathing each other's breath all the time. It's pretty gross. And I'm not sure how much all of us really kind of appreciated that before COVID. So I just like using that as my own kind of aha moment. But I think we're all much more aware of the unseen things, not only in the air, uh, but in our water as well. So we definitely see, you know, a heightened awareness on clean, safe drinking water. And I think that will uh, that will continue. I think people also be more concerned about the quality of the air in their home, you know, and I, this gets beyond LK's current scope, or I'm sorry, yeah, LK's current scope, uh, but, you know, air, air filtration units or um, uh, pulling clean air in from the outside to be used in your heater and your air conditioner instead of recycling the stale air within your house. I, you know, I think there's going to be, that's just one example, I think there's going to be a lot more that come out of people looking for more hygienic solutions in their home and combating these things that are that are unseen, but we know have a real impact on us. No, and I think, um, you know, it's obviously, this has been kind of the death of the water fountain, right? <laughs> For anybody that's had to travel, they're taped up and, you know, it's a big X over them. What you're saying about those unseen, uh, the unseen sort of spreaders that you didn't think of before definitely resonates, I think probably with everybody watching and certainly with this panel and, and air filtration, especially to your point, I think has grown. If, if anybody here has tried to get any sort of air filtration, even the standalone units that many brands sell now, they've been sold out and as soon as they get them in, they're sold out again. So that becomes definitely a much more uh, something that I think as we go forward and we're thinking of how we're building homes and Angela, you know, for, sure, for you for sure, as you're building environments where people share spaces where ductwork is in some ways connected, that becomes even more important. Um, I want to get you, give you a chance to also respond to, to that question. Yeah, I think um, this is a really important question because I think we all know that our residents and our buyers, our home buyers, their um, value sets have changed. 40%, 46% of our buyers are looking for safer, healthier environments and, that, and we're just getting started. And that's a huge percentage. So I think that number is only gonna go up. And I think two important things that we just talked about and I'm gonna expand just a little bit. One, Jimmy showed some incredible products and what I love about them so much is not only do they work into our wellness component because we put these in our in our main common spaces all the time in high density, the water fill, fillers especially. We have multiple in our common areas, but they're beautiful. So you're not sacrificing the integrity of the design. So thank you so much, Jimmy. <laughs> I think that's a huge point. Yeah. And then the second point um, that I'd love to build on just in terms of how I think the market is going to shift is on what Jennifer said. And that is, you know, a lot of this, it takes a lot of intentionality. So it takes a lot of disciplines from my perspective 
perspective and in, in my world of design, coming around the table, working together to provide solutions and accessibility to wellness products and environments um, for the mass market. And so, you know, architects and developers and, and designers coming together, manufacturers play a huge role in that, um, I think is really important is, is, is going to continue to progress us in this area of design and really meet our, um, our audience, which is really buyers and residents where they're at in terms of a value shift to answer your question. I just, I'm really passionate about this because I think it is so important. And the beautiful thing about it is the more that we can make it mainstream and we can educate everybody on the components of wellness, the, you know, it just will become part of the norm of design. And I think that is critical. I think that's highly important. Are you, are you, just to stay with you for one second, are you seeing the, the people that you work with? You know, you talked about all, all the folks that are kind of part of making any of these builds happen. You know, for a while there was a little bit of, um, maybe it was slow, slow to get all the different, uh, <laughs> all the different folks along the way on this wellness train. Are they there now? Yes, the, the, yes, I think so. And here's why. If they weren't there before, I work with some brilliant, talented disciplines, of course, including landscape design. Um, so uh, most of my network ha had already been there because we kind of share that value set. If we were to come across disciplines that maybe n didn't share that value set, they're being forced to um, adopt that value set just by the market uh, demand alone. So it is really exciting to see how it's evolving. And I've been part of some, been very fortunate and grateful to be part of some really um, exciting conversations and things coming down the pipelines, especially from the manufacturers. That's that's great to hear. And it's great to hear that kind of everybody is, whether they want to be or not at this point, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they have to be. But the other thing that you said too, is, you know, you were thanking Jimmy for making beautiful product. At the end of the day, you know, wellness or not, designers want to make sure that this things that are going into their spaces are beautiful and are not distracting from the designs that you've created. It's why panel ready everything ex exists, right? So that it doesn't, so that appliances don't distract from your spaces. So it's really nice to hear what you're saying. And if you haven't seen this in person, the, uh, the filter or the, the, water, uh, the water filler, you should see it in person. Uh, Jennifer, I wanna give you a chance to respond as well. I think the thing is this is, uh, the pandemic made out all of us look at where we live. And like, look at it with fresh eyes, like, whoa, I didn't plan on being stuck in this place for a long time. So I think you notice the amounts of sunshine that you do or do not have. So it used to be that walls of sliding doors and glass was only available for high end, but now there are ways to retrofit that concept into homes at varying price points. Even something as simple as adding transom windows down a hallway so um, your hallways aren't dark. Oh, this is back to our house. I just, we added sunshine in, not to talk about me, but like, it's all about sunshine. And because we had gone through medical stuff, it's like, I learned to be the fairy godmother of design where I can help others learn what I learned as my env environment impacted the way I felt. So it's bright, it's fresh, it's clean. I am going to add some weird to it later with some carved dragon like wood features, but <laughs> you got to have fun with it. So in here we added a whole corner of the house and it would have been nice to have it. The architect designed it to where there wasn't even a point in the corner that everything opened up. But for us, due to budgets, it's all kind of sliders that open up. So it was a way to take a high end concept and make it user friendly. So, and I think the other thing is, is color is going to be the big thing we all see. So obviously I'm not shy of it. And your magazine has always been the joy of color. And it's always been the part that said, we're not scared of it, but it's back to that kind of roaring twenties after the pandemic where like color is going to make you happy because we all just need to breathe out loud and remember like we all still like each other and let's make our houses happy because no kid grows up and goes my mom had the perfect shade of gray in her house <laughs> and i i would just like to say this is not my happy color i'm in a we work place <laughs> we judge not we judge not i am like my happy color probably very close to some of your happy colors jennifer so because we have more time here i'd love to get a couple of more examples and 
and maybe from you, Angela, in terms of some of your design projects that you've done, where you've really seen the, the effort and the work you've put into creating these kind of wellness things be used and how you've seen, um, how you've seen the people that live in these spaces really benefit from, from the work that you've done. Yeah, I think this is an important part too, because, you know, um, a lot of what we've done in the communal areas is we've connected that indoor with the outdoor. And we've known that's been really important for several years. So that's not anything new, but there is a heightened um, emphasis on that. And I tell you that as an example, because after we design um, a multifamily project or a hospitality space or so forth, we always survey the residents and the buyers. We want the feedback. We want to know what's working and what's not working. And I think I think what people um, misunderstand sometimes is, you know, you can be sustainable and you can have wellness components and you can work towards that happiness, but everybody has a little bit different perspective as well. So at the end of the day, the space has to be beautifully designed and it has to have an aesthetic that people resonate with and that they can authentically get connected to because if they don't feel that connection it doesn't all of those wellness components that you tried to integrate and layer in you know access to good water access to natural light all of these things air filtration um you know they they kind of don't they kind of go by the wayside because at the at the core they have to resonate with the space so we survey our um, residents and our home buyers after we design spaces. And, and, and we have been told that it has significantly made a difference in their lives, just from their perspective. They're more confident, their blood pressure goes down, their stress levels go down. They have a certain connection with the space. I would say one other key element uh, for our audience because everybody forgets this, and it doesn't matter whether you're designing a single home or whether you're designing a multifamily project, you can design and very intentionally put all your wellness components in it. Your space is absolutely gorgeous. People are resonating with it. And you go to do the install with all of your merchandise, your furniture, your area rugs, your artwork, and so forth. And you haven't off-gassed that material. That is a that is a big, big problem because you've done all of this hard work and um, you haven't off-gassed the, the, the merchandise, which really will put toxins in the air and the air particles to Jimmy's point. So, and it's as simple as putting your stuff in a storage unit for 30 days with air filtration and letting it, it just air out away from any of the shipping and the plastics and the so forth. It's as simple as that. And then install the merchandise. <laughs> I I love that. I mean, you're right, because it is that last element. Everybody's eager to get it done. <laughs> but yes. taking that time to do that makes so much sense. Yes. Uh, so I will, I will start to wrap up this discussion by asking for a couple of predictions before we move into Q&A. So give me one principle of wellness that you think is going to move that happiness scale upward in the next year. And Angela, since we're already talking to you, let's start with you. Oh gosh, I have so many predictions, but my hope is, let's just, let's just say my hope, my hope is, is that it becomes more mainstream and accessible and that really that our audience doesn't really have to necessarily think about it because they have a lot of smart people behind them, whether it's designers or manufacturers or architects or just incredible design uh, disciplines that can carry this through for them and um, really just make sure that they're concentrating on the things that, import that are important and that's their life experiences and their family and love and so forth. I love that. Jennifer? I would say you're definitely going to see lots of color, but I think don't underestimate the consumer that you didn't think would spend the money to do it well and right. You're going to see that people will have their aha moments, that it's worth the money to save up and have those moments. So it's not always your, your predictable one. So in sunshine everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> sunshine everywhere. Jimmy? For me, it's, it's pro people looking for products that are going to work harder and smarter for them. And to Jennifer's point, you know, I think people will be willing to pay more for more hygienic materials, for hands-free options. Uh, as they just, again, Angela, as they look at this place that they were forced to live in for so long unexpectedly um, and, and look, taking a really keen eye at, at, at their, their appliances, their products, and saying, what, what could this be doing more for me? And so the more we can meet those, uh, those needs, the better off we'll all be. I, I think that's great. And I completely agree with you at House Beautiful. We're definitely seeing that uh, that people are willing to spend the money now. And, and it's really more of an investment. You know, things that used to maybe be considered a luxury thing are now truly an investment in their homes as we're swinging on doors all day long and opening and closing drawers all day long and turning on the faucet multiple times a day. 
all these things help make our homes happier and healthier without a doubt. Uh, thank you so much for this lively and informative discussion. Uh, I know that we have lots of questions coming in, so I want to dive right in because apparently our entire audience is very interested in creating happier, healthier homes. So uh, the first question is, and this is for you, Jimmy, there are a ton of questions coming in about the LK Wellness Center. Um, could you walk us through that again? Yeah, the LK Water Center, it's... Um... A water, so it's a, sorry, this, this was written incorrectly. Yes, water center. <laughs> oh, it's quite right. It's quite right. And that's not the name of it. We're, we're, you know, name and process, but the water center really kind of describes what it is. And it slides in like an appliance would, and it will be available and panel ready, like we talked about. Um, slides into your existing kitchen uh, sink cabinet space. So it occupies that entire 36 or 30 inch width. Slides in self-leveling feet so you can cinch it up to the countertop. Uh, we have an open back design, so it plugs right into your existing plumbing, no matter where that is, coming up through the floor or in the wall, and your plumbing coming out. Uh, and then the drawers within this unit and within the LK neighborhood, again, there's a, there's a house for this and an actual a really good graphic where you can click on it and it interacts with you. I'll try and talk you through it. Both those drawers, the bottom one and the middle one, slide out. The bottom one's really big, handles all your household cleaning items. Again, it's a U-shaped drawer, so not only is it a great use of the space vertically within that cabinet, but also uh, front to back to access items all the way in the back. Low profile drawer in the middle for additional storage. That, and then moving up the unit, that apron front flips down, and there's actually a horizontal, uh, on the left-hand side there, horizontal filter. Same filtration and dispense capabilities are easy H2O bottle fillers um, that then runs right up into that faucet. The faucet is a two-in-one faucet, so you get your standard hot and cold water coming out of the main faucet head, and then there's a separate dispense, a hands-free uh, bottle filler dispense for your cold uh, drinking water. Not, not chilled, we, we do have some an eye on premium drinking water packages pre uh, potentially in the future, but right now the cold water that comes into your house, there's a separate line that runs through that filter and dispenses in a different location. And, and again, like I said earlier, I had the chance to see to see this, to see this virtually <laughs> yesterday. And you can go and open up all the things and, and see everything that it holds. And it really, uh, you know, having just moved into my new place and looking under the sink and finding totally unusable space, which I find very aggravating as somebody that focuses on the kitchen and bath market. <laughs> I, I think this is a brilliant thing, and I love that you know you guys are calling it an appliance, Jimmy. Before um, we we move to the next question, can you just give everybody again the the link that will, um, or if or if the next stage group can send to everybody the link that uh, that is the neighborhood that you can go into and see this. It is very simple. It's neighborhood.lk.com. That's easy. Neighborhood. Wait a minute. I might have screwed that up. Nope, they sent it. That's it. it. It's as easy as that. It really is. <laughs> neighborhood.lk.com. Perfect. Okay, so go check it out there. It's pretty awesome. Jennifer, this question's for you. How can we educate our clients about the importance of integrating universal design in the, into their homes? I think the great thing is that if you as a business go and get someone certified living in place, and if you create kind of bullet points, so if you have real life examples, so because a lot of times you never know when you're going to need it. So if you have someone who's already been certified for all those varying levels and you know how to like break it down into usable concepts, then as a business, you have things that you can hand out. So for example, we were also doing stuff with veterans and how helping veterans can help your business. And if you as a business just have everything pre-prepared, you just kind of leave it behind as a little moment. Or if you have a wellness and the home and the environment on your website, those are things to show like, look, this is how my business translate that. Like obviously Angela, they ooze it out every pore. They can't help it. You look, I feel better looking at your spaces. So like, I think the thing is just make it part of your brand as you do it. And then you do it in your first conversation with them of I'm going to make your house look good, but I'm going to make it feel good mentally and physically. I, I totally agree with that. I feel like when it's integrated into the the first conversation, it becomes it becomes a thing that you now have to have, right? Um, and it is part of the DNA of the space that you're building. Um, Angela, the next question is for you. Uh, can you share details on the living wall you showed and its importance? Yes. So we worked with um, not only our manufacturer, but the general contractor because we had to have in-house irrigation. So I think that's the key piece of that. And um, 
you know, when it was first introduced to the market, which was several years ago, it was quite expensive to do. They have now brought those price points down quite a bit. And in fact, they have prefabricated ones that you can use as well. And then we worked with the landscape architect to make sure that we had um, specified greenery. And believe it or not, we were very invested in that because we were very interested in the color way, <laughs> what kind of plants they were. Um, I think it drove them a little crazy, but at the end of the day, we got this beautiful wall that not only visually looks good, Good and works towards wellness in its own right because it's just beautiful and also it works towards cleaner indoor air quality which is great because they're all live plants um, we we were just able to accomplish that by working closely with the landscape architect and the manufacturer i don't recall off the top of my head because that project was um, installed a couple of years ago exactly who the manufacturer was but i can provide that information um, to to carisha you or whoever needs it yeah, let, let us know who that person was. Um, it's Angela Harris at Trio Design in Colorado. So you can you can Google her and her beautiful, amazing portfolio pops up. Okay. <laughs> her, Just email me and I'll give you the manufacturer. <laughs> her team is pretty amazing. Um, okay, Jimmy, more questions for you. People really are interested in all your innovations. Um, so a ton of questions about the bottle, bottle filter, which filler, I cannot say this. <laughs> <laughs> the bottle filler, um, does it have a filter? So that's where I was getting stumbled. Does it dispense chilled water? Is it plumbed directly? Is it certified in Canada? So let's start with, <laughs> is it filtered? Yes, it is filtered. The same filtration capability, NSF uh, 43 and 51, uh, lead, class one particulate, the same filtration capability that's in our easy H2O bottle filler. It also provides that great one and a half gallon per minute flow rate. You know. It's like three times faster than your annoying slow fridge filter. So again, very, very convenient. So that same experience you're getting from an easy H2O bottle filler from LK out in the world at large, this is in your home. So filter, filtered, yes, uh, it is chilled. Okay, great. <laughs> and, and, and yes, we do have we do have an option to have it with a with a chiller. So your, your water is chilled. Oh, so uh, it is direct plumbed. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No option, the, the chilling part is an additional option. It, it is. We have different models. So we have some without it. If, and, and, and again, back to this discussion about what are you willing to pay for, for convenience in your home. It's not a huge upcharge to get chilled water as a, as a feature in there as well. Sure. And it, you said it is plumbed directly. Plumbed directly, correct. And we built it to sit within uh, between two standard uh, two by four studs. Uh, so I think I saw a question pop up about can you put this in an existing home? Uh, the answer is yes. It's, it's definitely easier to do it as part of a giant you know, or, or more of a, a kitchen remodel or renovation. Um, but you can certainly work it through with your plumber to, to, to do that within the existing studs. You just would have to open up the drywall in that area and, and put, put everything back together. And I have to say, um, I've actually seen it also installed um, in garages uh, as garages become or have become over the last year a room in the house. Uh, and I've also seen it on the flip side of the garage and like the mudroom or laundry area, if that's where your space is too, where you kind of, where all of that already sort of exists and you're maybe not having to go into your kitchen wall so much. So I see- yeah, Mudroom and, and, and uh, laundry room are very popular as well for that yeah. exact reason, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, and Angela, uh, the next one is kind of just to tack onto that. What products require off-gassing before installing? Um, the general rule is all of them. Um, if, if you can't do all of them, I would at least do your upholstery and your large case goods. Um, but the general rule is all of them. And if you're going to store them for 30 days, and it only takes 30 days, if you're going to store it anyway, just push your install out and let them all breathe. And, and the key to that is unwrapping them and letting them, you know, air out. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Jimmy, um, this is becoming your show. Uh <laughs> Is the water dispenser compatible for an outdoor living space or only for the interior? Uh, unfortunately, I do not know that, Karisha, off the top of my head. I have to admit, this is not a product I'm responsible for, so I'm sorry. Uh, please, let's take note of who that was, and we'll, we'll definitely get them the answer. I'm not sure if it's built to be outside. And I think I know the answer to this one because I know LK so well, but um, I will let you answer. Do you have any innovations for the bathroom? Not yet. Yes, I know this everybody because when we were building our house in Colorado this past year with LK, that question was also our question. <laughs> so um, Angela, what are the basics of bringing the outdoors into a residential space? 
You know, I think it first starts with a visual connection. So um, glazing naturally, but to Jennifer's point, that doesn't have to be a whole nano wall necessarily. That could just be beautiful windows with French doors or a slider or something. So I think the visual connection is, part, is important. I agree, sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. Um, and then outside of that, we always look at the materiality. If there's ever an opportunity to pull the materiality, whether that's a ceiling detail or whether that's a floor detail or wall detail, from the inside to the outside to make that um, there no delineation between those spaces. I think that's important. We always look at spaces, whether they should be covered or uncovered. And then one of the things that we love so much now is that so much of the furniture manufacturers are making products that are um, compatible both indoors and outdoors. So not only are we pulling the indoor uh, merchandise out to the outdoor, we now can take the outdoor merchandise and structures and bring them to the inside. And one great example was that huge chimenea we did in the common area. I mean, typically you would see that in an outside space, right? Well, we thought one day around the design table during a design trial, we were like, why don't we build this giant chimenea on the inside of the clubhouse and put all of these incredible, comfortable leather seats around it. And you know what? It worked. It is the most popular space. People sink down in the, those chairs. You can feel their stress level, just like going from 10 to two, the minute they sit down and they, they just conjugate around there. It's fantastic. You know, it's, it's so interesting when environments like this are created, what we gravitate towards and we all do have this need to be around greenery, to feel connected to nature, especially now when you were talking about how much time we're spending indoors. We were already spending a lot of time indoors before the pandemic hit. This just made it even, like accelerated it to the nth degree. So everything you're saying, um, I feel like really resonates. And I wanna thank all three of you, Jimmy, Jennifer, Angela, for such a great, panel discussion. I want to thank our audience out there for all of your questions that keep pouring in. I'm sorry we can't get to all of them. And of course, to thank LK uh, for continuing to be a great partner to House Beautiful, to the NKBA, and for sponsoring today's panel discussion. Uh, again, you guys now all have that uh, the link to the neighborhood.lk.com. Go check it out. It's really fun and interactive. And if you went to their real life booth last year, you will know um, you, it's kind of the, the booth. <laughs> it is the booth that you can walk through and try and experience and really go hang out in. So thank, thank you all for being a part of this. Thank, thank you, you, Carisha. Thank you.